Hey folks, Turbine Guy back once again. Today, I would like to talk to you about something called a data request. And this is good for the whole country, I believe. Every state has some sort of system to do this. And it's a way for individual people like you or me, just normal people, to get a hold of the government records so that you can see what was going on up there. You can see if something nefarious was. You, you, you can follow the process of what they did to ensure that, I suppose it was kosher what was going on, let's say, up at City Hall. And that's what I'm worried about. So, data requests in Minnesota are guided by Minnesota Statute 13.01. Well, 13, uh, I'm requesting under 13.01, the Minnesota Data Practices Act. And 13.03, subsection 2A, talks about how the government entity has to respond promptly. So we'll talk about that in relation to what I have going on here. Now remember, you can use this kind of information yourself. Uh, do a little research, find out what your state allows, what Minnesota allows, how your community works. And you can gather information like this too. Uh, about your situation or about someone else's situation. It doesn't just have to be about you, it can be about somebody else. As long as it's public government record and it's not confidential. Now something we're going to find out, which just confounds me, is that if the people or the people who are responsible for supplying this information, this data to you, are also the people who say may be nefarious or whatever they're doing up there, to me it's like asking the criminal to give you the evidence of the crime. They're not going to do that. There's no way they're going to do that. So when you're doing these data requests, don't expect they're just going to hand over all the evidence of what they might have done wrong up there. What they're going to do is try to feed you evidence or feed you stuff that's non-relevant, flood you with stuff that's non-relevant, uh, and try to hide. And what you have to do, which is what I've had to do, because I've done these data requests over the years, is you have to be persistent and get them from a bunch of different sources. And you need to combine that information to see the whole story. That's what this data request is about. It's about getting a lot of information to combine. Now, if we look, my data request was 11019. And if you look here, I got the city to stamp it received city of Orno on the front page of the request. And the reason I did that was so that there's absolutely no question. You can mail these in, they can get lost in the mail. You can submit them online, whatever. I like to bring mine up there and have them date stamp it. Then there's no question about it and about what you delivered. Now my data request is asking, basically, the things that I'm looking for, okay, is emails, text, other forms of communications, from city council, mayor, city staff, and appointed officials. Okay, these are all government officials. All the stuff they do is public data. Okay? You know, and you might kind of think, well, this is what was going on with the Hillary stuff. This absolutely is. Okay? This is how you get a hold of that stuff. Now, what I was asking these people about was us, me, my wife, our property, other properties nearby, uh, neighbors and their neighbors' lawyers. Now, you got to remember, we're in lawsuits with these people, and if Orno's communicating with these people, then that's public data. It's not, it's not uh, protected by uh, lawyer-client privilege. And we want to know, are they working together or what? So that's why we're asking for this stuff. Communication between Orno and the neighbors and lawyers. And then we're asking for a specific police report that the city refuses to give us. Okay, number 16012870 of the Orono Police Department. So that's what we asked for, and I've shown you up on the screen what it is. Okay, now the interesting thing is, we did this on January 10th, like I said. And the city of Orono responded on January 15th. I said, hey, that's pretty good. But now they didn't respond. All they wanted was a clarification. They weren't sure what the stuff in yellow is down here. Okay, you've requested email communications and other forms, blah, blah, or any other documents of the Orno Council members, Orno elected officials, or appointed officials, department officials, employees that relate to, okay, wind turbines, my company, 
the company that Walsh filed illegally about my company while I was on the council, my, me and my wife, properties, and then we get to the neighbors, Lanford, Rogers, Walsh, Patrick Walsh, Jack Hannon, which is a neighbor's lawyer, his law firm, and any of their associates. So we're trying to see what was going on, communicating that why. And they're confused. Ornell's confused. The highlighted grouping of items, 9 to 15, is in need of clarifications. Are the highlighted names in relation to the first eight subjects, or are they separate subjects entirely? Okay, so they were a little confused. So I responded. I responded, and my response was, as you can see here, that I want all of these people's communications in regards to all of these subjects. That should be pretty clear. But that's what I responded to them. That's what I set up here. Uh, email communications from these people that relate or regard this stuff. Well, they were confused, so I cleared it up. So we're all on the same page, right? Well, maybe not. Finally, over 60 days after my initial request on 315 and 19, it's two months, over two months. I'm not sure how prompt that is. And I kept getting emails from the city lady saying, well, we have a ton of stuff that we got to put together. So you can understand it's taking time. This is so encompassing. Well, turns out, what did we get? We got a CD with very little information on it. So all this time she needed the over two months to promptly respond with almost nothing. She could have put this together in a matter of days as far as I'm concerned. So we got the response. I showed that to you on March 15th. And we got a CD. And this first picture you'll show, it shows all the uh, information on the CD. Bullet 1, 3, 4, 7, and 8. Okay, those are the files they put in there. Now, I'm not going to worry about a couple of those because uh, various reasons, but I wanted to focus in on the most important ones. And that would be Bullet 1 communications between the city staff and all that, about the city staff and us and all that. Well, here's what I got. Files currently on the disk, okay, this whole area. Now, if you notice, there's one Johnson, one Carlson, okay, the Barnhart and the Piezo are city employees, and then there's additional docs. So there's actually nothing here. And I, I looked in the other two, Big Island Community and Minutes, there's nothing there. There's nothing here from any of these people. Now, we go into this additional docs area, additional documents, and we look through that, and we page down and look one more time, one item about Peter Lanfer, but there's nothing here from them again. And if you actually look at all of these documents they sent, over half of them are from me to the city. I didn't need the city to give me what I gave them. I need the city to give me the communications from the city council, the mayor, the city staff, and appointed officials about all of this stuff I asked about, and there's nothing there. Nothing. Well, that's frustrating. And I know plenty of people out there have run into the same type of situation. One other issue I want to talk about really quickly da, 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 is that police report. Okay? Police report 16-0128. We asked for this up here. We didn't get it. We didn't get it at all. And what the city said, let me find the page quickly. Okay. Police report. Any documents or emails associated. Under Minnesota Statute 13.44 Subdivision 1, the identities of individuals who register complaints with government entities concerning violations of state laws or local ordinances concerning the use of real property are classified as confidential. Okay. Well, this is a police report. Police report. Right here. Police report. Police report. It says in here, police report. This is not a property complaint. Now, they may have put property complaint stuff in there. But that doesn't matter. They filed a police report seeking criminal action. 
against us. That's why we wanted this to see what that report says, and the city refuses. This isn't the first time. My wife did a request earlier. My lawyer did a request. Everybody's done requests. The city refuses to hand that over. Now, the city also refuses to hand over the city council, mayor appointed officials, information about us, our properties, our neighbors, our neighbors' lawyers, Go Green Energy, Go Green Energy LLC, all of that stuff. Zip, nada, nada. We don't get that according to the city, and we don't get that according to the city. Well, what's the use of statute? And you see where I go that, to me, the criminals are the ones disseminating the evidence and the criminals, to me, are refusing to give it up. Why? Because then they would be incriminated. And they don't want to be held accountable for what they did. And you know, I would like to say something to you. I like watching Dr. Phil. If there's one thing Dr. Phil says every now and again, people who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. People who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. Well, or no. Why are you hiding all of this. Come on, Orna, why? Well, fortunately, there is a bit of a recourse. You know, you can always sue the city, but then you're stuck dealing with the judge who's probably going to side with the city, and, and then you're not going to go anywhere. And unfortunately, that's the way it is these days. Is it seems that judges take very little time to educate themselves on how this stuff actually works and would rather make their life easy and just side with the city and say, too bad for your rights. We face that quite a bit. But we do have another option, and the option in Minnesota is called iPad. Now, I tried looking up what it means, but I can't find that anywhere. But this is basically the office that is in charge of reviewing two different things, data practices requests and open meeting laws. And what they do is they give official, non-binding, advisory opinions which tell the city, hey, you know what, you probably better give that stuff up because it's the law. And how do I know this? Because I've done it before and I've gotten a letter before from iPad, let me get a good color, from iPad telling Orno, hey, you guys give it up. That's what the law says. That's what you need to do. I did this before and it worked, so I'm doing it again. I sent a letter to iPad to one of the directors, uh, Taya Moxley Goldsmith, and I, I outline what's going on here and I give them the evidence we've looked at so that they know what the data request is, the refusal, and, and that we got very little and that there is nothing from these people. So what I asked for them to review is a couple of things. Look, do the Nygards get to get a police report as everybody else does? It's public record. There's no minors involved. There's nothing like that. There's no reason not to give up a police report that was claiming criminal action because that's what police reports do. If you're not, then you file a separate complaint. Orno has a process for filing separate complaints. That's how you go through it, and you do it. You don't file a police report. What else are we asking? We are asking, I just want to read it out of here. Okay, first off, can Orna withhold that police report under a property complaint statute? That's our first question. Second is, can Orno ignore the request for documents from city officials and city staff, including personal emails, public emails, text messages, and other forms of communication? So, is it okay that Orno decided these people don't have to give up any of this? Is that okay? And the third question is, should any of the people information is requested from, like city staff, mayor, city, city council people, have to declare if they destroyed pertinent documents? Now, I know that's kind of silly because, let's go back to the criminal thing again, what criminal is ever going to admit it? You know, heck no, no. I, especially when they've proven, like the Orno mayor has, that his veracity is extremely low. At that point, you don't think you're going to get it, but I think this was an important question to ask. Do they have to admit the documents have been destroyed? Well, this opinion 
doesn't really mean much because it's an official non-binding opinion and the city doesn't have to do squat when you get one. What it does for you is when you do go to court and say, look, your honor, this city over here, they're being nefarious. They aren't holding up their end of the deal. The law says they have to do this. They're not doing it. iPad even says they're not doing it. Can you please issue an order and make them follow the law? That's what you have to do. Sometimes you have to go through this whole rigmarole. Start out here at the data request, deal with their questions, deal with their delays, get their answer, which has very little. So then you go to iPad, figure, look, can you guys help me out? They say, sure, you should have had this. Then you go back to Orno, and you get to start all over again. Heck, they might not even give anything up that time. Then you go to court. But at least at that point, you have iPad on your side. So I'd like to wrap this up by saying, I gave a data request to the City of Orno on 1-10-19. City of Orno took forever to fulfill it. The City of Orno gave me next to nothing. Actually, they gave me a lot of my documents back. And they refused to hand over what I requested, which is public data. They have to give it. So anyways, I'm waiting on iPad now. I sent the letter off the other day, and when it comes back and we get further, we'll go through again. Well, I hope this helped you better understand how the system works for a data request. Maybe you can file one and get information you want, and don't be afraid to ask for anything and everything you need because you never know what you'll find.